All right, we're going to get started. Uh, no G is uh, been called away on the phone for a second, so you're stuck with me. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Chad, and uh, glad you're all here tonight. Um, so let's get going. Um, first up, we're going to turn the mic over to Carl, and he's going to walk us through some of the events. Come on up, Carl. All right. All right. Pretty good crowd tonight. Thanks for everybody for coming. Uh, let's see. I got to hit the. Uh, let's see. It's the down arrow. Okay. Uh, annual Seven Sixer Santa Net Recap. Well, a big thank you. Let's see. I don't know what kids we got here. I don't know what I could say. Uh, <laughs> a big thank you to, to Santa on both nights. Um, they did a great job, and it was kind of fun. We kind of had two sessions on the first night because there was so much confusion, where'd he go, on the time, but we did a six, six o'clock session and a seven o'clock session that night, and then a seven o'clock session on Christmas Eve. And they both lasted about, oh, 30, 45 minutes. And the kids had a lot of fun. I listened to it. It was, it was, a, it was a gas. So a big appreciation for Santa's even the bell ringing Santa that made it difficult for everybody to hear. <laughs> anyway, no, it was fun. It was, it was really fun. Um, anyway, um, also there was some chatter on Facebook about it because Jeff Mortensen, the um, originator, the originally happened because of Jeff's daughter, uh, you know, they had a, you know, a, a family problem where um, the little sister got lost uh, before childbirth. She, she was expecting a little sister or brother, and the seven sixers felt so bad for her. And they pooled their money together. They bought her a big gift basket and cards and money and treats and all that kind of stuff. And we had Santa take them over to her house and present that and, the, and had a, the Santa net that year. And it was basically just for her. And it morphed, all of that morphed out of that. And so there was some chatter on Facebook and actually a picture of her. She's now a teenager. And so, um, but Jeff said he, he always appreciated that and, and she always remembered it. So that's kind of how that started. And, uh, and so we appreciate everybody's uh, activity on that. I, we had some, we had Ron check in from California on Echolink with his kid, with his grandkids and, and stuff like that. And, and uh, all the kids, I had my grandkids there. Uh, they, 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 they just had a lot of fun with it. So anyway, I appreciate everybody that. And, and so next year when it comes around, you know, if you got time, please be ready and, and uh, uh, get active on one of those nights. We'll probably do it the same way on uh, uh, Christmas Adam and Christmas Eve, as Noji likes to say. Anyway, <clears throat> all right, let's see. The lunch Bunch, I was kind of hoping this was on. I didn't get a chance to uh, preview this. But Wallabies, I know Lila's been announcing it on the 7-6 uh, net in the last couple of weeks. Wallabies and American Fork, that's right, Caddy Corner from Hobby Lobby. Uh, they, do, they generally do that at 1 p.m. on the Saturday. They do it on, it's the 13th of January at Wallabies. And they move that around to different restaurants uh, all the time. So anyway, um, come and, you know, uh, meet some of the other hams at... Uh, Frequent. There's quite a few people that frequent that every single month that it goes on. And so um, we appreciate everybody doing that. Okay, the big one. And I sent an email to Noji saying, hey, we don't have this date yet. But that was then. And now is now. Lynn, who lives... Lynn, it's time for the net. Um, <laughs> um, Lynn, who lives in Highland, schedules this for us because we have to have somebody in Highland sponsor it and put up 50 bucks for the key and make sure we clean up after ourselves. And so the last six or seven years, I guess, maybe, that we've done the 7-6 um, barbecue. And we usually try to do it in early June. Last year, we couldn't get a date in June at all. And they ended up doing it in July, which I don't really, I didn't really like that. It was a little warm and, and uh, it was a little busy at that park and everything else. So. I told him first choice was June 1st, second choice was June 8th, third choice was June 15th, and I didn't really want to go that far, you know. 
and he managed to nail the first and got a confirmation on it. So tentatively, 7-6 Barbecue, Highland Glen Park, which is uh, up just um, down in that canyon uh, away from uh, Lone Peak High School. Many of you have been there before. Uh, we do door prizes. We know you set up a get on the air station. They do some HF down there. And um, we provide the chicken, do the raffles to support our chicken habit that we have every year. And uh, it's potluck other than that. So we have a lot of fun with it. Uh, anybody got any questions on any of that? That's all I got. All right. Thank you, guys. Next. Michelle, you're next. Okay. Activities that are coming up. We have ooh, Winter Field Day. It's the full, first, uh, full weekend, last weekend of this month. We are going to be down at Linden Marina. Uh, Saturday the 27th through the 28th, we are providing pizza, guys, and drinks. Um, we need one more trailer. So if you've got a trailer out there that you are not using, please let us know. I will actually be posting winter field day on um, Facebook. Then we've got summer field day coming up. This is one of the one where we go camping. Um, Joe, WH6QV, is my husband. We are, he is planning on being up there before, like a week before? Week and a half before. Week and a half before. <laughs> yeah, for summer field day in June. So. That, that way, if you want to bring your traders up the week, weekend before or get them or something, there's somebody there to watch it. Yeah, so if you guys want to bring him up early, he'll be up there. Um, well, I'll be popping in and out to go up and see him, but we'll be up there. Um, as of right now, we are planning on doing hamburgers and hot dogs for the main meal for that one. So, and that's gonna, we'll get more information on that one. But winter field day, we still need one more trailer. And Noji, you are up. All right, so those of you who are interested in taking more ham radio exams and courses and so forth, there's a few things coming up. Um, and even if you already have a license, all right, you, we always get a couple people who, um, who already ha have got their technician license attending a technician course. That's okay, because it's like, okay, I just spent a whole week memorizing all these things. I got my license. Now what do I do? Well, now come to this class and you can actually learn about what it is you've got through memorizing. That's what we do that for. Well, now it's for all those who actually want to get their license too and those who want to upgrade. There we go. So the next one, um, th these are the two exam sessions on uh, January 17th and Saturday, so January 20th, over at Canyon Road. And then we have a technician's course starting this coming um, on, the, on the 23rd anyway. Um, over at the, just right over here, about two buildings over, while it's still standing. It's going to get partially torn down. But anyway, so um, technician course, for those who want to get involved with that, you're next. Thanks. I did a little research today, and I found out January 2nd, there are 18,501 licensed SAMs in Utah. Woohoo! But on the other side, there are 3,417,000 people who live in Utah. So we've got a lot of work to do. Um, I'm inviting everyone. We have a great class. Noji does a great class. And it'll start in February, the first Thursday in February. I believe it's February 1st or February 2nd. And it'll go for five weeks. We've had some great success. In my class, I just wanted to do a quick little demonstration. I need two helpers to come up and hold, help me just real quick. Nick, would you come up? And anybody else who would like to come up? We're going to do a quick little demonstration. OK. Nick, you're going to hold this. This is our antenna. 
If uh, we drop a signal through our antenna, what's going to happen? <clears throat> you go ahead and drop that through our pipe. And put your put one hand down to catch it. How fast does that fall? <laughs> Almost. Okay, now we're going to do something different. We're going to drop a magnet. Now, copper is not magnetic. It doesn't, nothing, magnets don't stick to it. What happens when we drop a magnet down through this pipe? Speed of light. Show us again. <laughs> it took forever. It took its time. Why is that? Well, you come to my class and I'll explain why that works. It's just like your antenna, how it's picking up. You know, radio signals are made up of two types of wave, electric and magnetic. And uh, so, thank you very much, Mick. And thank you, guys. Hope to see you at our exam session. And we have an exam session, March 2nd, and then our class will be every third day. Thank you. Hey, Dave. Yeah. To what you were saying, to start with, somebody posted, I think it was on the UVARC group, group page, uh, uh, Facebook, maybe it was 7-6, about how to find uh, the hams in your area. And it wasn't the QRZ one, but it was another one. And I did that for American Fork. You could not see the streets on that map for the amount of hams in American Fork. Could, the, the amount of map pins that were in that, in, in that picture, I mean, I, I took a screenshot of it if you want to see it. You could not see the map. There were so many. And so I'm sure there's other towns around that are like that. So it goes to your point. There's a lot of hams, and a lot of them are not active or could be more active if uh, somebody put their arm around them. All right. Thanks, you guys. <clears throat> Thanks, Carl. There's the information on the tech course that Dave's teaching, and there's the exam. Questions? Is all of this on the UVARC net, internet channel? Um, site? We can put, post it. I do have my cards. I can pass them around if anybody wants more information. You can email me. Okay. Because okay. I know there's some of that is in there. Yeah. Some of it is, but um, you can also go on to like camstudy.org and you can find the testing sessions. It's also archived on the video here, right? Yeah. This video is also archived. Will be archived? Yeah. On YouTube. It'll be on YouTube. It's in the newsletter, too. Yeah. Um, Gavin. Gavin, for service. Hey, Gavin. Um, Dave, you have a question? Yeah, I have a question. Um, is there a way to find out what I've seen many of you here before. I've given kind of different little snippets of what I do. Uh, my name is Gavin Grote. I am part of you cares. Let me just hang that right there if it doesn't cause a short. Here we go. What I'd like to do is, as I'm looking around, I see a lot of new faces, and I'm just curious, how many people here are relatively new hams? Look at that. Yeah. That is so good. <laughs> when I became a ham, the reason that I wanted to is I realized that I needed some type of, I didn't realize how communication plays in emergency preparedness. And as I, my sole purpose at the time to get into amateur radio was purely emergency preparedness. And I sat, went around and I looked and I kind of kept away from a lot of the different clubs and just kind of watching, watching the, the land to see where would I fit in. Um, I came across a, a group called UCARES. UCARES is an acronym for Utah County Amateur Radio Emergency Services. It falls under the umbrella of the Sheriff's Department for Utah County. They're the ones that kind of maintain and monitor our, uh, our different uh, repeaters out there. We have an emergency controller or coordinator, which is actually right here, Karen. You'll hear from her a little bit later. I am over the membership side of things. And so I just wanted to do a quick little snippet of what UCARES is and how it can actually help you to become more trained in your emergency preparedness. Um, one of the things that we do is joining UCARES is free because we're all volunteers. Hit your space bar. Down arrow. I didn't realize I had some slides. These are our frequencies on our website that we use. Um, there, if you don't have this information, you definitely want to do it because if there's something that goes down countywide, 
um, we actually support the city. So if Orem City is just inundated or they need help, better help communicating with Provo and other different cities, that's where the county can come in and, and help with that service. Some of the things that we do to help prepare people with their emergency preparedness is we have a certification program. There are four levels of certification. I brought some of these, I have about six of these. If you ever wanna look at them, I'll have them in the back. Um, these are so valuable. I've gone through the program, I'm a level three out of four levels, and I have realized as I've gone through these different requirements, how much more I'm able to participate in emergency formats. Uh, there are times where we're on a, you know, you've probably heard the normal nets. Well, we do nets on different activities, and some of these activities are out in the, out in the boonies. And so this is something that really helps a lot. To join, it's really simple. You can go to our website right there at the, at the main. But I also have in the back, I have something that looks like this, just a QR code. You can simply scan this with your phone, fill out the Google form, and then you'll start getting some automated emails that'll just kind of help you to get your first few steps going. Let's see, last little bit. Uh, to be a member of UCARES, you you'd have to be over 18. I don't know, do we have anybody over 18 here? Okay, <laughs> so just checking. Um, and of course you fill out the form. Let's see, what else do we have? We also, as you notice, I brought up a vest. These vests, this is kind of like the UCARES uniform in a sense. This is how people know who we are and how we're affiliated with what programs. It also kind of just, it gives that sense of unity for our members that are a part of that as well. So what it did is, with all the information I just sent to you, or said to you, I have here three questions to ask. And for those that can answer these three questions, the first two, anybody can answer. The last two, if you're not a member of UCARES, that's for you guys. And if you answer this correctly, I have your choice of two different car decals. I've got one that shows the frequency for the UVARC frequency, the repeater, and then I have another one. So if you're UCARES members and you want to put this one on your car, this is the main emergency 3-4 repeater, and it's got the information there. So you guys ready for this? I'm not sure how I'm going to look at you guys and read the question at the same time. No, I just memorized the question. Okay. What two things... Uh, what two things do you need to do to become a U Cares member? Be yeah. 18. That's all I heard. I need to have two in order to win. So she just gave one answer. Do you give up? Sign up. Anybody says yes? Be a ham radio license. Be an amateur radio operator. Correct. Come on up, Greg. Come get your. Uh... I don't have a car. You don't have a car? You want to put it on your window of your house? <laughs> you want to donate it to somebody else? Yeah, donate yeah. it to me. Don't need to <laughs> Okay. And then your choice. Do you want the U VARC or the U CARES? You, uh, the, let me see. U 34. Park. There you go. Okay, so there's one down. Let's do another one. All right. How many levels of certification are there? Four. Four. In the back. Four. Four. Come on up. I heard all these others, but I'll do just like I do with my classroom. If you didn't raise your hand and you just blurted out, you don't win. <laughs> Okay, your choice. The U Vark or U Cares? The U Vark. Thank All you. Right, right, good choice. Good choice. Oh. There we go. Okay, this one is for the, uh, anybody who's not a member of U Cares. How, well, let's, real fast, how many people? Well, I see a couple vests already out here. Who's not a member of U Cares? Okay, this is a good one. This is a good one. You ready? So only you can answer this one. And the answer to this one is what does U Cares stand for? Right there, black jacket. Clark County Amateur Radio Emergency Service. Perfect, come on up. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Hey, I'll tell you, that's the smart way to do it. What would you like? You cares, I guess. You cares, there you go. These last three. These last three I'm going to donate over to Noji for any door prizes. 
future, no. Thank you. But anyway, thank you guys. And if you want more information about it, I'll be in the back. Come join up. Get your all set up. Thanks. All right, now we're going to turn the time over to Sean Hatfield for some announcements about New Hampshire. You had to be way in the back, didn't you? Yeah, way in the back. He likes it back there. <laughs> Sean, you got he makes everybody wait for him. What? Three pages. Three pages. Three pages. Oh. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, I got to tell you, this is the most exciting part for me. This is <coughs> congratulations on new hams and upgrades. So if you start looking at the list, and no, I'm not going to read them. That is a lot with three pages worth. So anyway, there's one. There's two. And here is our upgrades. There's three. All right, who is our new hands that are here tonight? Where are you? Stand up. Give them a big hand. Congratulations. Any of our upgrades here today? Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Okay. It's all yours. Well, you got it on the first time. Okay, well, that's, not, uh, that's not like us. <laughs> oh. Okay, welcome. So uh, my name is Karen Alicon, and I am the emergency coordinator for Utah County Aries. And tonight we're going to talk about our comms plan. Okay, we're not changing anything, but through the last year um, that I've been in this position, it's like if something happens in Utah County, how do I how do I rally the troops? And so there's you know a lot of information that's been talked about but I don't know who knows it and who doesn't know it. So this is kind of what we're gonna talk about tonight. Why learn? Even if you participate in every UCARES activity, you'll still be aware of our plan and how to handle um, you know, communications in, a, in an emergency and how we're gonna rally our troops. So you can join UCARES or you can you know, just be a part of UVARC. We all, you know, like to help out and um, when it comes to communications. Um, with UCARES, we do do a lot of community services, so um, you can get out and practice using your radios there also. So what is changing? Well, we're going to get a whole lot of more radios. <laughs> 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 We are actually adding clarity to our existing um, comms plan. Everyone should understand how we communicate to our members and how our emergency nets will work. So before an emergency, you want to become familiar with your radios. You don't want to have an emergency come along and you run in and go, oh yeah, I know where that radio is, grab it, Get it out of its box, put that, radio, that battery on, and guess what? Dead. <laughs> Your battery's dead. Make sure that you can manually program your repeaters or whatever frequencies um, you're going to use into that radio. I learned that the hard way. I got my ham radio license. I got me a little handheld radio. I was ready to go. I was hot on the trail. Wanted to work everything and anything I could. Found out what frequency we were using for whatever uh, function I was working, programmed him into my radio and headed up the canyon while I was going up to Hobble Creek. And if you guys are aware of Hobble Creek, there is hardly any communications up there. So I get up there, sitting in my position, all of a sudden something comes up with the repeater, our net control decides, yep, we're going to flip 
communications and we're gonna go to this frequency here. Well, I didn't have that frequency in my radio because it wasn't listed on the group of frequencies we'd be using. So, nice gentleman came up to my car and said, let me have your radio. And as I'm sitting there, he's programming my radio with his frequency. He says, you know, if you're gonna work these events, you really need to know how to program your radio on the fly. It'd be a good idea to learn. And I've never forgotten that. And every time I look at Richard Bateman, I remind myself, keep learning how to program that radio. <laughs> Get to know your surroundings. Well, how can you know your surroundings? You don't know where your emergency is gonna happen. Know your city. Know some of your county resources. Get to know your emergency managers. Get to know where your emergency operation centers are. Practice using your, your radios during the nets. Also practice using your radios at those UCARES events, those parades, those fireworks, um, those bike rides, those runs. Hey Karen, I got a question for you. Um, when you talk about getting to know your city and your county resources and such, um, one question I, I know that we ask this quite a bit, but when it comes to like getting to know like your your sheriff's department officers or whatever over the radio, how how can we better get to know them through the radio without actually contacting them like? during emergencies and such? Are we even allowed to contact them during emergencies? Or like, how does that? None of your officers are pretty much on ham radio. We are on a ham radio base. So when I say get to know your city officials, I mean get to know your city officials. Okay. We know Heath. Heath is a city official. He represents Orem City. So if you live in Orem City, you're gonna wanna get to know Heath. And we'll get a little bit deeper into the weeds, okay? And then UCARES has our levels of certification that Gavin talked about earlier that will help you get to know your radios. It will also help you build up a go bag so that if you go out into um, an emergency situation, you have different pieces of equipment um, ready for you um, if you need them. So communication methods. How do I rally my troops? Do I sit at home and call every single one of my UCARES members on the telephone? Well, I can get on the radio. I mean, if it's a natural disaster, we're all gonna know about it. We've either felt the earth shake or you know the wind's blowing like crazy. Um, it's raining like crazy, you're gonna start watching. You know, your local areas is it starting to flood. But what if, remember that solar eclipse we had not too long ago? I got a call from the state emergency coordinator and said, just want to let you know, we've put our state EOC at a level two activation. Don't think we're going to need ham radio operators, but just in case, we're letting you know that we've done this. And I started thinking, well, gee, I know all of my AEC's um, phone numbers. I don't know G's phone number. <laughs> You know, I may know a couple other ham radio operators, so we could kind of slowly start getting the word out. So we've decided, and this is the best way we've got right now, I'm not saying it's not gonna change because we've got some other ideas, an email list. So when you sign up for UCARES, we've got your email, we'll send it out, out a mass notification on email if we're able to. We have the Telegram channel and I know some of you are familiar with the Telegram channel, some are not. This is what we've done. We have the little chat channel. You can subscribe to the chat channel. You can decide how you want your notifications to come in. Mine, and I don't turn mine off, but mine goes off most, almost every day, quite a bit. And that's fine. So what I've done is we've created a call out channel that channel is going to be used for emergencies only, okay? So if you wanna participate and you wanna know what's going on and wanna help out in case of an emergency, I highly suggest that you subscribe to this call out channel, okay? Myself and my AECs are the only ones that are gonna be able to post on this channel. It will be emergencies only. 
Okay? You can't... If, How do I find it? She'll get to it. We'll get, yeah. Um, you can't post to it. You can't ask questions to it. You can't do anything. It's going to give you, you know, pretty much the information that you need to know. And if you want to ask questions, it's going to pull over into the chat box and you guys can chat about it all you want. Okay? Um, but we wanted to make it because there are some out there that, you know, don't subscribe to the chat box because, again, it's going off all the time. And some people work days, some people work nights. Um, we wanted to make it kind of something easy so that everybody could participate in it. And then we have our membership, the little chat box I was talking about. We're looking at other ways that we can maybe get an emergency uh, communication out there, but um, this was the best that we had in the short time that we had to put something together. So this is a list of our frequencies in the area that we use. Um, number eight, the 447-400 with the minus 123. Okay, so it's the very, very last one. That is a new repeater that is on Teat Mountain. So if you can reach it, use it. If you have issues or concerns with it, make sure that you drop an email to us so we can let our repeater team know that we're having some issues with it and we can have them take a look at it. Okay, so our call out procedure. If there's a call out, again, if it's a natural disaster, you'll probably already know something's going on. It'll either go out via email and it will go out on the emergency telegram. That emergency telegram is gonna tell you what you need to do. We're gonna to go to the 34, which is the 147.34 repeater. That is where we will do a staffing net. When you get onto that staffing net, you're gonna to wanna to, you're gonna to wanna to listen. See if there's traffic going on, because there will be a net control operator on there. And then after that, you'll get on and you'll say, this is KG7 UUR. I'm located in Orem and I'm checking in. That's it. Okay? If it's a natural disaster, been an earthquake, high winds, downpours, um, hang on, I'll get right to you. Um, downpours, you're taught in your cities that they're gonna to wanna to know what's happened around in your neighborhood. This is not the place. So I don't need to know that your house was taken away like Dorothy's. I don't need to know that you've got four people that are greens, five yellows, two reds, and a, and a, and a black. Or I need paramedics, or I, I need a fire truck. This is not the area for this, okay? This group, the UCARES group, is county, okay? Who's going to want to know that information is your city, okay? And this is how we mingle, okay? And I'm sorry to put you on the spot, Heath, but I am. I'm going to use Orem City because I participate in the Orem City drill, okay? So let's say something happens in the city of Orem. It's just citywide, okay? So he's going to get on. He's probably going to call, let's say, the ECS team because he needs a couple of ham radio operators. We deploy our ECS team out to Orem. Heath then gives me a call and says, hey, I need more ham radio operators. Can you supply me with ham radio operators? So then I'm gonna put a call out to my team, or if we've already got a staffing net going, I'm gonna get a hold of the net control on the staffing net, say I need XYZ of um, ham radio operators. Can you get me five and have them contact me on this frequency? Okay. In the event of an emergency in Orem, something happens, they have their quadrants and they have a ham radio operator assigned to those quadrants. That's where that information is going to go to, is in that quadrant. You're going to reach out to your ham radio or your person in your quadrant, report your, I need fire trucks, I need, my house is damaged, my whatever it be, I've got water coming out of the the manhole in the middle of the street. 
that's where that's going to go. Then they would relay that to their person who would then relay that to the city. Okay? So my staffing net, I'm looking for people, radios, and where you're at. Okay? And then an assignment. So you're going to come in, you're going to check into the staffing net, and you may sit for a little bit. And then we'll get the call and say we need ham radio operators. And so we'll reach out to you and send you to wherever you need to go. And then when you're done with that assignment, you're going to want to report back to us. Let us know I finished my assignment, everything went good, if there's any issues, things like that. And then once your assignment is complete, again, you're released back to the staffing net if you're willing to go out again. Where I can see this happening is if there is something of a large nature where they're going to be using ham radios for a long period of time, where we will start rotating ham radio operators out. Your question? I think you probably answered it, but I'll ask it anyway. Okay. Um, you mentioned that we should get on that repeater and put our call sign out there and say that we're available. Uh -huh. I'm assuming that we need to wait for that control to uh, be on frequency. Am I correct in that assumption? Yes, you should, you should hear net control. Okay. If not, if you're not hearing anybody, you can always ask, you know, KG7 UUR, uh, or net control, KG7 UUR. If you don't get an answer, guess what? You're net control. Or you're on the wrong channel. That could be too. <laughs> Okay, so is there any questions regarding the call out, the procedure, the staffing net? One quick little note. Um, what happens if the repeater's down? We go to a simplex frequency or we'll go to a different repeater. Initially, you should go to the 3 4 simplex because that's where everybody can be listening. Then, if everybody decides we need to go to a different repeater, then we'll go to a different repeater. Okay. Um, if by chance we don't live in Lehigh or we don't live in Orem, we live in Lehigh and it is a bigger area mm -hmm. Lehigh's involved um, how would we know and the second part of the question is some people have just handhelds some people have the like a traveling in your car and mm -hmm. then some have the big HF things mm -hmm. and we can't all hear them all how would some of us know Something's going on. Again, if it's a natural disaster, you'll know. If it's something that's happened in Orm and Orm's put a call out for ham radio operators, again, we'll put that on that um, emergency notification that we're needing ham radios to come up on our um, staffing net. That's where you should get that notification. And then you would come on and say, you know, hey, I'm in Lehigh. Um, same thing too, being in Lehigh, you need to get to know your Lehigh. Yeah. So it's like if Orem's using this one. That's not an Orem one, that's a county one. Okay, but, that's our staffing one, that's our primary frequency that UCARES um, utilizes. So if we have our radio on and it's on a different frequency like 76ers or the 120 mm -hmm. internet thing, how, are we, how, how would we hear something? You would have to change your channel to that. So we would, when a disaster happens, we just go change our channel. Right. Okay. And, and buy a couple more radios. Yeah. Or have a dual band. If you have a dual band radio, even some of your hand handhelds are dual bands. You can monitor two frequent frequencies at a time. Or you can collect a lot of radios like some of us. Like the picture, you know, the vest with all the radios. I think that the, the, the critical thing about this is when when that call call comes out from staffing or from that control, we we check in, say our name, our call sign, and where we're at, and that's it. We don't give any other information. We just sit back and wait for contact. Unless there's other information, and again, when you get that notification, 
in um, Messenger, it's going to tell you what information we're looking for. Yeah, and if it doesn't, the net control may, may come up on the radio and say, okay, I'm looking, you know, you check in, KG7UUR, um, I'm available, I'm in Provo, um, I've got both mobile and handheld. Hang on, let me finish this and I'll get right with you. And then um, he may come back to me and say, okay, are you able to do this or are you able to do that? And so if there's further information that we haven't been notified of in the beginning that has come down the pipe, then our net control will have that information. Yes? When we check into the um, staffing net, does that automatically tell whoever's running that net that we're available for assignments? Or do we have to specifically say we're available for assignments? Nope, that's why you're checking in. But you're still going to want to let him know you're available. I might only be available from 9 to 1. So if I check in, I'm going to let him know I'm available from 9 to 1. Oh. And this is where I'm located. OK? Oh, Karen, to Cindy's question, um, many um, people have in their basement <coughs> 40, 50, 75 watts of power to give, to put out there. So you may have a handheld that you may not be able to transmit back to somebody, but certainly most people that have those um, higher powered mobile or base stations, you should be able to hear them. Yes. If nothing else, you should be able to hear them. And if they're telling you to go to another channel or if they're telling you that they're on simplex or whatever and you can't get back to them, at least you know that information, even if you won't be able to get back to them. And I mean, I know, I know, that's, I know that's the case because we've done it before. Yeah, a lot of, we practice relaying and, and all that. Okay, so staffing net example. Net control asks for a check-in. This is KG7UUR, I'm located in Spanish Fork. Net control is going to come back and say, KG7UUR, Spanish Fork, I acknowledge you. That's it. And that's it. Okay. Now, as we're going through with our night or Tuesday night nets. How many of you, when you check in, you just give your name and your call sign? Okay. So we don't want to do that anymore. Okay, because I think what's happening is when we call on our net, we'll call any stations north of American Fork, please call now. So you give your, and I don't, I can't remember the first three, so I apologize, but OSS, okay? He's gonna come on and he's gonna say, you know, his call sign, this is Dave, and may say no traffic because he doesn't have any, any traffic. Um, what I would like to start seeing because, and I do this every once in a while, I'll flip around and go to an odd city. Everybody knows I live in Spanish Fork. I always check in under Spanish Fork. But what I want is I want you to check in where your two feet are standing. So if we were to check into a net right here, right now, we'd all be checking in from Orem, because that's where we are currently located. Not where you live, where you're currently located, okay? Even if you're checking in under Orem and you're in Orem, I want you to do, this is KG7UUR, um, Karen, in Orem. Can you check in mobile? You can check in mobile. It's the same thing. I live in Orem. If I'm coming back from Salt Lake, I can check in and say, my name, my call sign. I-15 in Lehigh. I can say that. Mm -hmm. I'm so mobile. That's exactly where I'm at. Because I may have something, if he's checking into my staffing net, I may have just gotten a call that said, I need a ham radio operator um, in Lehigh. And I've got Gary checking in. I'm in Lehigh. Guess what? Gary just pulled the lucky ticket, and I'm going to send him to where I need to send him. <laughs> Unless he tells me something otherwise. Keith? One thing we need to keep in mind that <clears throat> these staffing nets are not going to be always the same. You need to listen to net control and respond with whatever net control asks you for when he asks for you. And that's it. You need to be flexible. 
you need to be able to change frequencies on your radio, you need to be able to respond with what the net control asks for. You gotta be flexible because every emergency is different and what that, what the U Cares group needs or what the county needs or what a certain city needs, always gonna be different. So you gotta be flexible. I just wanna make sure we understand that you only check into a staffing net if you are ready to be dispatched somewhere. Correct. You don't get no brownie points for just checking in. Yes. You get negative brownie points if you say, well, I'm at work, but I'll be home by five, and then I'll be able after 30 minutes to go. No. If you're not ready to go, don't check in. Don't check in. Get ready to go, then check in. Then check in, correct. Now, I didn't have to do a staffing net once, but I was put on the spot at one time as I was starting to learn radios. It wasn't a ham radio, but I went out um, when I lived in California. I was on a ride-along with my local sheriff's department. And we got a call up the canyon. And um, when we got up there, we had um, communication problems. We couldn't communicate with dispatch. We were so high up into those mountains, we could not get into dispatch. So they looked at me and they said, can you drive? And I said, yeah. Okay, well, I want you to take whoever's car it was. Um, I want you to take that police car. I want you to go up at the top of the mountain here until you can get in communication with the dispatchers. And then I want you to stop right there. Because if you're in the middle of the street, turn on your lights. But that's where I want you to sit. You're gonna you're gonna um, relay traffic back and forth between the um, dispatchers and um, the officers that were up on this call. And that's where I got my love for playing on the radio. <laughs> In the hot seat. In the hot seat. What was it like driving the police cruiser? She was giving tickets. She was, <laughs> she was hooked, didn't she? I was hooked. She got to put on the lights. That's what I learned to drive. That was the first vehicle. That was the first vehicle I ever drove um, before I got my license. <laughs> so now that tells you my love for speed. <laughs> so one thing to remember when we're out in the community and we're working, whether it be a, a parade, whether it be um, an emergency situation within the city whatever it is, remember that it's our role to assist in communications. And not only in communications. If I had an officer come up to me and ask me, hey, can you do this? Is it gonna help him? Is it gonna make his job a little bit easier? Then I'm all for doing it. Doesn't mean I have to be on the radio. That we don't take charge of the situation. That's their situation. That's Heath's situation. Let Heath take control of it and let you know, he gets paid the big bucks, the big bucks. And so let him take that and let him tell us what we need to do. FEMA training states, most issues occur when meaning individuals try to help in ways that are unhelpful. So if they're not needing us, let's not go surround the area and think that we can um, really help out if they don't need our, our um, assistance. And please stick to your assignments. So if, you know, if you're out working your parade and you're assigned at Center Street and 500, please stay at Center Street and 500. That way, if I go out looking for you and I can't find you, I don't have um, SAR out looking for you, too. Okay, any questions? That was a lot of information. Comment back to one of your first few slides uh, where you're talking about uh, knowing your sources and stuff like that. I think, and, and we've had this happen before too, uh, when you get in the canyon it, and, and you need to program your radio and you've been leaning on your phone or your internet to, to remind you of how to do that without some of us with short memories, that's not the place because there is no internet available in, in some of those places. And so if you don't know how to program your radio or you don't know protocols or something like that, 
that's not the time to be looking them up on the internet. You're, you're, there is no internet up in some of those canyons. That's correct. So you were talking about you know, making sure that our radios are always powered up or such because you don't want to you know, be in a situation where you have to turn on your radio and all of a sudden it's out of power. Mm -hmm. I always, I have a, you know, one of those long batteries for my Valfang radios. And about once a year, I always pick out one time a year, and it's usually during, actually twice a year, and it's usually during general conference. I'll take out my, my chargers, and I'll plug in my radios, and I'll do that twice a year. And that way I know that at least that they're always charged up twice a year, and that way I'm more than confident in the situation where, where to come up, I can take my Balfang, put the battery in, and it'll work every time. I do but, it more than that. Yeah. I, do about every twi I do it about every other month. I'll pull all of my radios out, stick them in a... Uh, charger, line up the chargers and put the batteries and the radios in. So I, I have a, a, a local man in my area who did emergency communications for the church. So we actually talked to a lot of people who were in emergency situations, California and earthquakes and stuff. Um, the biggest problem they had is people would get busy during an emergency and forget about ham radio. They just get busy and forget. So my advice is to, you know, if it's an emergency, you're going to get busy, but take a moment to, to mentally check in and, and say, is there something else I should be doing right now? Like checking into the staffing net if you are available. Don't forget about this portion of the emergency. And one thing about net control, and this doesn't go just for this net, just for the staffing net, it could go for your, your parade nets. Um, you know, our 4th of July parade, our net control operators are usually run, running two or three um, frequencies at the same time. Um, but also some of our marathons, you've got one net control operator in there and we've got 10 aid stations split in half and five are on one frequency and five are on the other. And it gets busy. So if net control says standby, it's not because that person is sitting there reading a magazine or whatever it be. It just means that we're probably on the other frequency or we've got something going on that's, that's requiring our attention right there. It's nothing against you. If it's an emergency that you're trying to let us know, if we tell you to stand by, then you need to come back and say, I have emergency emergency traffic for you so that we can have the other station stand by so that we can acknowledge your information. So this is for anybody who's a ham radio operator? Absolutely. And they don't have to join anything? They nope. Just, they just know about the program, go to that frequency, listen in. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you. Now, given that, if you're part of UCARES and you've gone through any of the levels of training, you're going to be more useful. Yeah, that's what well, I was yeah. just wondering. Yeah. Do we have to be members of UCARE? No. But you say no. No. Okay. Thank you. Yes? Is there a copy of your slideshow on the UCARES website? I don't know if it's there yet, but I know it is going to get on there, yes. We've done this. Um, this is only our second one that we've done. We did our first one Tuesday night, so we will get it up there. Appreciate it. And then the telegram, who do we, Gavin. how do we connect? It's not the paper there. I just, nope, nope. Talk to Gavin in the Talk back. Talk to Gavin in the back. He put out an email. I know it's on, if you sign up for the messenger chat part, he did put it in there. Um, We'll send out another one tonight. We'll do another one tonight. You bar site email us. Okay. So it's like, what, who would I look up? Who would I? Gavin back there right? has a link. He we can help you get it on one. purpose so that we don't get spammed. Perfect. Okay. Yeah, must have an invitation. All right. Any other questions? Can I make a comment? I, Absolutely. This goes back to some of the stuff that, that they were saying about the batteries. I do a net for about almost 10 years now at the, at the U at the hospital. And probably maybe twice a month, there's somebody on my net, everybody thinks they're smarter than their radio, that didn't charge their battery or forgot to put it in the charger or for whatever reason, you get one syllable and they're gone and you wonder what's going on. So, you know, having that battery and having a spare battery and, and having it, it charged up, some, sometimes these redundancies of nets that we do weekly and everything else for multiples of uh, purposes 
That's one of the things we do it for is to check your equipment and to make sure that you're up to snuff and make sure your batteries are charged. And so, like I say, I experience that all the time on my nets. Sometimes I recognize the, the syllable now that they came through. I, Mike, I didn't hear you. I, I know you were there, but uh, you're not transmitting. And, you know? and batteries don't last forever. They do wear out. Mm -hmm. So um, checking into a net every once in a while is not really a good test of your battery. Um, get in a QSO with somebody for 10 or 15 minutes, and if your battery lasts through that, it's probably good. But if it doesn't last, it's time for a new one. Well, and then there's those of us that check in. You know, we've got the bigger radios in our cars, and we've got bigger radios in our rooms, and you know, that's typically where we're at when we're checking in. So how often do we use our, our handhelds? So, um, you know, it's good to kind of flip off every now and then as to what we're using to check in with. And if it's a bigger emergency and you have no power for your, your mobiles or your HF radios or whatever, you might need to think about how to get other power if you want to be on the radio. Absolutely. Get yeah, a little bit ba uh, the battery packs for the, the radios. Keith. Well, we're not talking about batteries. I'm old school, been around for a while. Um, and I know there are some radios that don't support this, but I never buy a radio that does not have a double A battery pack available for it. Because when I go out on an event, I don't use my rechargeable battery. I use double A batteries and I have extras in my pocket for when my battery dies, I can pull out extra batteries, reload my back, and I'm good to go again. Do you keep them in the same pocket as your keys? No. <laughs> hey, Karen. Yes. She actually made a, a really good point about, you know, if we don't have any power for our, you know, a, for our mobile stations or our stations that are, you know, more powerful radios at home, would it be more helpful for us in, in this case to start checking into, like, let's say the youth cares net on our handheld radios? Would you recommend that? Or how do we, because yes. how do we know if our, our handhelds are powerful enough to do what they need to do in those emergency situations? That's why you need to practice with them. And checking in on the youth cares net would be a good way to practice with them. If you've got 12 radios, you should check in on a different one every month or every month of the year. It's a good idea. Use them all. <laughs> Just giving you a hard time, Keith. Because I, I know I can. Yes, I do. Okay, any other questions? If you have questions after the meeting, you're welcome to come up and ask me. If you've got questions you want to ask in a more of a private setting, feel free to email me. It's my call, my call sign, kg7uur at gmail.com. And then I'm going to turn the time over to Tyler here because he has a little bit of information for you. What she really means is I get to acknowledge the big mistake I made. When you copy and paste with a computer, every now and then it hates you. Um, all of these have printed our 3-4 repeater incorrectly. The papers have the national simplex frequency. It's not our main repeater. Um, so, this is the corrected version. I'm going to pass you out the paper. The corrected version is already available on the UCARES website. But, um, for your information, this is the correct version. Feel free to um, cross it out. We had printed too many of these and it was too late. So. All right, thanks for our you cares folks um, for coming out. It's been an awesome presentation. Uh, we really enjoyed it. Um, all right, thanks for our you cares folks um, for coming out. It's been an awesome presentation. Uh, we really enjoyed it. Um,
Yeah. Which one? Yeah. 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 All right. All right. Um, so uh, again, thanks to uh, Karen and, and the UCARES team. They do a great job, and uh, please show them your support. Another round of applause for them. All right. We'll turn some time over to Brent uh, K E K E seven S A O to do our door prizes. <laughs> Oh goodness, all right. So first of all, did everyone get their tickets or who hasn't gotten a ticket yet? Okay, keep your hands up for me. Hey, Chad, can you help me with? Yeah, so let's see how many we have. So one, two, three, four. Just make sure you bring it back so I can put them in the bucket. Yeah, if you want to win a prize, yeah. Never mind about those. Oh, yes, okay. So, our prizes tonight include this is actually my favorite prize that we have up here tonight. It's a 7 3 hat. Hat is a 7 3. A two way handheld transceiver. Or a bell bang. VHF UHF. It's a what? VHF UHF. VHF UHF. Yep. A ham radio snack disguised as M and M's. Or a survival kit. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> An iCom water bottle. And of course, our famous A double Okay. Who else needs a ticket? Our famous A double R L up here, Michelle. And an antenna for a Balfang. Oh yes, and of course the J-Pole. Now in times past, what we've done is we've used the J-Pole as kind of like the main prize. But what we're going to do now instead is all prizes are up for grabs. If I call out your number and you won, pick whatever prize you want. Except for the 7-3 hat, because that one's mine. Oh, go drink your milkshake. I'm gonna get sassy with you. Candy bar. <laughs> I hate you so much. All right, here we go. Four six zero. Four six zero. Yeah, the last three. Four six zero. I'm sorry, everyone. Yeah, check. It's gonna be the last three numbers on your ticket. That's anything including anything the including the J-Ball. Carl. I'm right here. I just bought one. Well good, now you got two. Everybody needs <laughs> <laughs> Or you can have the M&M's, the hat, the, the Belfang, the AWR membership, the water bottle, the antenna. Mm, I already got one. The antenna can also act as like a whipping post oh, if you need to whip someone. He needs a hat. There you go. There you go. There you go. All right, good. Although, could I, does anybody carry two antennas? Do you have two yes. antennas? Yes. Oh, yeah. Does anybody not carry yeah. two yeah. antennas? You know what I mean is, <laughs> would having two of those be useful? Yes, I've got two of those. I've got four. Everybody has four. I've got 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 four. Four nine four. Four nine four. Nope, four nine four. All right. You got the survival food, disguised as M and M's, the hat, the the whip antenna. Hey, turn around, turn around. 
Four, eight, five. Four, eight, five, going once, going twice. Nope, okay. Actually, I'll take this one out. It's probably short. Yeah. No, actually, it's not. Four, nine, or zero. Four, nine, zero. Four, six, four. Is the number I would be calling, Chad, if this was actually your ticket, but it's not. Go sit down, it's not your number. I didn't. It's actually four three one. Four three one. <laughs> hey! The Balfang. If you're the new ham radio operator, you definitely want the Balfang or that. There you go. Turn around. Hold it up. Hold it up. Big smile. Big smile. There we go. Thank you. Thank you. Four six four. Four six four. Four six four. Four six four. Yeah, it's still a high number. Yeah, it's still another high number. That's no, actually, it's about this one. Oh my God. Four five five. Four, five, five. Hey, guess what? I just got my number called four, four, eight. Sure. That's because you went through 14 tickets. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. All right, you know what? I'll tell you what. I'll discard those. I'll discard those. I won't win anything. Oh, hey, round the corner. Oh. Yeah, come to mind. Okay, what's that number? Four, four, four. I told you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, since everyone seems to be so picky about the way I go through this box, did anyone want to go through it for me, Michelle? Actually, no, not Michelle. She's worse than I am. Oh. See, I told you. She spilled three. Okay. 4.30. 4.30. Yeah, I, I gave him two because he was a new ham radio operator. Let's call a different one here. The ham radio gods smile upon you tonight. 4.43. 4.43 in the back. The M&Ms. Because that's all we have left. The survival kit, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, we got one more prize? Oh, we got three more. Three more. Are you serious? I just threw out mine and Joe's in there. And I just threw another one in there. Okay, let me, I'll just go through here. 490. Did I recall that one? Shoot, I'm going to have to... Yeah, I gotta call that one too. Let's see. Five hundred. Five hundred. Okay, we got this right here. All right, everyone, thank you so much. We're going to be QSYing over to Fat Daddy's Pizzas.